I have a lot of old timer friends and many of them like to tell me stories about how things just aren't made as good as they used to be made. So that had me thinking, what about Greece? Now lithium to Greece was developed in the 1940s and became the gold standard of that time. Lithium is still used in Greece. In fact, we have some modern lithium Greece and some Greece from the 1940s. So let's go ahead and compare the two and see if anything has improved over the last 75 years. In the first test, we'll measure the tackiness of grease. We'll also see which grease can handle the heat and which one will go up in smoke. We'll measure how well these brands perform in extremely cold temperatures. We'll test the water resistance of both brands. We'll measure the film strength of each brand. We'll see which brand offers the best protection against corrosion. We're gonna mix the vintage grease with this Mag 1 and see if any sort of reaction occurs. One pound of Conoco Pressure Lubricant Medium, manufactured by Continental Oil Company. I really enjoy reading the marketing claims on different products, and it's interesting to see how they did it back in the 1940s. A specially developed grease to be used on shackles and other exposed chassis parts in automobiles, trucks, tractors, and farm machinery. Also recommended for many types of industrial equipment to which grease is applied through fittings. Its outstanding feature is lubricating value. We're going to test that. It also has unusual ability to adhere to bearing surfaces under severe pounding to stay put. We're going to test that too. It seals the ends of open bearings, protecting against water and dirt. Wow, check that out. The first time this can's been opened in about 75 years. It has a very unique smell to it. This grease was part of someone's grease collection and they had had this grease in their possession for over 30 years. When it comes to specific applications, the ability of grease to cling to moving parts is extremely critical. So which product has the most sticking power? We're about to find out in the next test. I built the next test jig to quantify the cohesive and adhesive properties of grease. The test will measure the amount of force required to separate two metal discs that are held together by the grease. I'll first place approximately 25 milliliters of grease on the very center of the bottom disc. This stuff's a lot like honey. This stuff is very sticky. The top disc will be lowered into position, then I'll apply just enough downward pressure to squeeze out all the air pockets and to form a layer of grease around the entire perimeter of the disc. I'll then apply an upward force using a pulley and lever setup and an inline weight scale to measure the amount of force required to separate the plates. Wow, the test happened quickly, so I'll slow down the camera and we'll take another look. The vintage Conoco grease delivered 55.42 pounds. Wow, look at that. That stuff is really sticky. That's actually pretty impressive and better than some of the greases I've tested in the past. The Mag 1 grease claims superior chemistry and superior performance. Multi-purpose marine grease that's water resistant. Specially formulated with a premium state-of-the-art lithium grease, this multi-purpose marine grease is a distinctive tacky grease which resists water washout even under the most severe conditions, including salt water, formulated with a high quality base oils and additive systems to provide superior rust and corrosion protection and a high melting point in excess of 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which ensures retention where high temperatures are encountered. Meets NLGI certification GCLB, recommended for the following applications. Boat trailer wheel bearings, boat lifts, chassis suspension, universal joints, centralized lube systems, and ball joints. Do not mix greases of different type. Use a solvent to remove and clean out all traces of incompatible greases before repacking. This grease is distributed by Warren Performance Products out of Omaha, Nebraska. After the grease was removed, I used brake parts cleaner to clean off all the grease residue. Mag 1 did an excellent job at 46 pounds, but that's not enough. So the wind goes to the vintage Conoco grease. In the next test, we'll be comparing the film strength of vintage grease against Mag 1 using a lubricity tester. I'll begin by adding approximately 40 milliliters of grease into each test cup. I'll make sure that both the test bearing and the wheel have been thoroughly coated with grease on each surface before the test begins. Since grease is an extreme pressure lubricant, I've increased the amount of downward force to the bearing by more than double compared to motor oil. The test will last right at two minutes. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scar on each bearing to see which product offers the best protection against wear. Mag 1 is on the left and the vintage grease is on the right. There is a lot of damage to that vintage grease bearing. Even Mag 1 had quite a bit of damage, but this is by far the most damage I've seen to a bearing on the lubricity test. This vintage grease just doesn't offer very good wear protection. A very important role for grease is to prevent corrosion. 
In the next test, I'll apply a very aggressive rusting agent to three different wheel stud lugs. I've already removed the protective zinc coating from the bolts to make sure that they are more susceptible to rust. I won't be applying any grease on the control bolt and I'll apply a very light coat of grease on the other two bolts. I'll apply a powerful oxidizer several times and we'll see how much corrosion takes place in the next 24 hours. Wow, that didn't take long. Our control is already rusting and it's only been about 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, the Conoco is still doing fine. Ag1 is doing great, so we'll be back in about 24 hours after I apply the rusting agent a couple of more times. Up next, we'll be measuring the cold temperature performance of each grease. Both sets of bearings have been chemically cleaned to ensure that all the original grease has been removed. The purpose of this test is to measure how grease inhibits the motion of bearings at temperatures below negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The official test is called the Grease Load Temperature Torque Test. I'll first pack each set of the bearings with grease. Since I don't have the official test equipment, I put together a test jig to compare the brands. Then both sets of bearings will be placed in a freezer that's set to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll come back in 24 hours to test the cold weather performance of each grease. Mixing incompatible greases can have significant consequences. They may react together and cause separation of the base oil from the thickeners of the two greases. When this happens, the base oil can no longer stay in place. Both greases are lithium based and should be compatible, but there's only one way to find out. We'll check back on this in 24 hours. The water spray off test will let us know how well these greases withstand exposure to water. We'll test one grease at a time. I'll first apply a quarter inch layer of grease to the test plate and then weigh the test plate. Bag one grease weighs. 214.22. The water in the test will be right at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the test plate is in position, the test will begin and the water jets will spray water onto the test plate. The test will last right at one minute. After the test, I'll scrape away any grease that's extending beyond the edges of the test plate and then we'll weigh the test plate once again. Additionally, we'll measure the size of the grease spread and compare performance. That's a pretty good sized crater with the Mag 1. The Mag 1 start off at 214.22, it now weighs 212.26. That's a loss of 1.96 grams. The crater's not perfectly symmetrical. It's 67 millimeters long, about 41 millimeters wide. The vintage Conoco weighs 213.95. Before testing the vintage grease, hot water was added to the test tank to bring the temperature back up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The vintage grease start off at 213.95, it now weighs 211.42. That's a loss of 2.53, so the Mag 1 grease wins the showdown. Wow, that crater is huge. It did not do very good with the water wash off test. The vintage grease is about 75 by 53. A high quality grease should have very good heat tolerance and the official ASTM test for that measures the grease dropping point. The dropping point of a grease is the temperature at which it passes from a semi-solid to a liquid. It determines the cohesiveness of the oil and the thickener of the grease. A soap structure that is formed properly can withstand very high temperatures. The Mag 1 grease is supposed to have a drop point that's over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. There's no information on the vintage grease can regarding the dropping point. I'll be applying approximately 25 milliliters of grease on each grease slide. The grease slide is made of metal and both sides are securely attached to a quarter inch piece of sheet metal to ensure equal conductivity of heat to each half during the test. I'll have a temperature probe touching the sheet metal during the test so that we can keep an eye on the temperature. The grease that avoids turning into a liquid and then avoids going up in smoke wins this test. So let's turn up the burner to the maximum temperature and we'll see which grease can handle the heat the best and which one is going to go up in smoke. It's been right at six minutes and the grease tester is right at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And the vintage grease is beginning to move. Can Mag 1 hold on or will the vintage Conoco go up in smoke first? Wow, the vintage grease does not like the heat and it is the first to go up in smoke. And the grease tester is right at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and the Mag 1 is starting to head down the slide. So it's the Mag 1 grease for the win. It's been right at 24 hours since the bearing was placed in the freezer. Let's first test the Mag 1 grease and we'll measure the resistance to motion in pounds. It took a little over 24.36 pounds to rotate the bearing packed with Mag 1, which is actually sort of high. So it's possible that the vintage grease could win this event. And the vintage grease nearly won at a little over 25 pounds, but it's Mag 1 for the win. In the next test, we'll take the bearing previously packed in grease and allow the grease to reach approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Then the bearing will be submerged in water and rotated for 30 seconds. After the test, we'll visually inspect the bearings for grease loss in the path of the bearings. Wow, there's not much grease left in these bearings. The water really washed away the grease. 
The finished grease is on the left and the mag one is on the right. There is a huge amount of difference between the two. Just like we saw with the water spray off test, the vintage grease just washed away when exposed to water. There was definitely some wash away with the mag one, but it did a very good job. The oxidizer has had a chance to go to work on these bolts. So let's take a look at each of the bolts and see how much rust has taken place. The control bolt is in bad shape. You can see a tremendous amount of oxidation. Wow, quite a bit of oxidation on a vintage bolt as well, especially around the base of the bolt where the bolt was soaking in the oxidizing solution. The Mag 1 did very good preventing oxidation, definitely the best of the three. Both types of grease are lithium grease, but I was very curious if the grease from the 1940s would get along with the modern grease, and it looks like it does. No sort of issues with the grease separating from the oil. They definitely don't make grease like they used to, and that's probably a good thing. Modern grease is definitely a whole lot better, but then again, in 75 years, you'd expect a lot of improvement to lubrication technology. All my video ideas, including this one, come from viewers, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.